One of the areas that we really haven't focused on to date on Innovate 2016 is transportation policy, how transportation should and will impact the 2016 presidential election. Today we're going to change all that. We're going to talk to one of America's leading authorities on smart cars and on transportation revolution, Saha Kata, who is the founder and CEO of smartcar.com. Saha, welcome to Innovate 2016. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on, Andrew. So I've given you a big build up. You're the, you're the authority on network transportation. What does that mean? How yeah. did you learn so much about it? Uh, so uh, first of all, I define kind of the connected car as a vehicle that has you know, embedded cellular connectivity, meaning the car itself is talking to the internet much like your cell phone or your uh, 4G connected tablet. And uh, uh, I kind of got in the space about, uh, about two years ago when uh, my father actually purchased one of the first 100 or so Tesla Model S's. And, uh, I actually reverse engineered the vehicle and figured out how it communicates to Tesla's internal networks. Legally? And, uh, not, not, it's a little bit in the gray territory for, sh for sure. Um, and uh, launched a little app which was actually featured on uh, TechCrunch and about every single mainstream tech blog, uh, which was actually a Google Glass app that let you say, okay, Glass, unlock my car or uh, uh, locate my car, things of that sort. Uh, uh, that uh, made a big splash in the press and uh, led to Tesla calling me in and uh, having me present uh, my discovery of um, vulnerabilities. Did you present to, to Musk? Uh, no, not to him, but several other uh, uh, folks on the engineering team. And uh, uh, that process kind of uh, got me uh, diving head on straight into the automotive connected car space and uh, led me into uh, uh, going off to uh, uh, starting smartcar.com. So Saha, is the car, the connected car, essentially a large, gigantic version of a connected phone? Is it a, a smartphone on wheels or should it be a smartphone on wheels? Uh, I think a lot of the inspiration from, uh, for what's happening in automotive right now definitely does come from the mobile world. Uh, things that are uh, relatively simple like collecting analytics from cars to improve them to uh, uh, doing software updates to prevent having to do recalls or even potentially saving someone's life if uh, a mother or a father who's busy doesn't have time to take his car into a dealership when there is a recall, you can address those issues over there wirelessly by the time you wake up. Uh, your Tesla Model S, for instance, is already updated, mitigating that issue. So um, those are the things that uh, we've taken for granted in the mobile world and haven't necessarily existed in the automotive space till today. And we're starting to see that emergence uh, make its uh, entrance right now. So how the, the first industrial revolution was driven, excusing the pun, yeah. Uh, in, in many ways yeah. by the American automotive industry, by Ford. Can our second machine age, fourth industrial revolution, whatever you want to call it, the networked age, can that be driven, sparked, uh, inspired by the network car? Uh, I think so. I think uh, um, uh, to date so far, uh, uh, I mean, the companies up in Detroit, Germany, and um, the Japanese cars are uh, uh, have gotten to be some of the safest, most reliable cars. Uh, you can imagine uh, they're safer than they've ever been. The number of accidents in automobiles uh, has drastically decreased over the years. Um, but one of the areas they are definitely lacking and unfortunately happens to be in uh, uh, on the software and cloud services side. And uh, Silicon Valley uh, happens to have a huge amount of skill set, particularly in this place. And, but we don't necessarily have the experience when it comes to necessarily building automobiles themselves or uh, hardware. And there are some exceptions like Tesla Motors, but I think uh, uh, bring the experience that Silicon Valley has on software cloud services and, uh, and applying that to the automobile companies that do exist uh, is going to create a very, very different so, so future. You, are you expecting the, the Apple connected car or, or maybe even the Google connected car? Is that going to change everything? Is the real first connected car going to come from Silicon Valley? Uh, it already did. Uh, that's the Tesla Model S. <laughs> so the Tesla yeah. is the first in the revolution. I think the first modern, really connected car, uh, absolutely, is a Tesla Model S. So maybe Apple should just buy a Tesla. Uh, that's hard to say, but um, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, differentiating ideologies there. But um, uh, 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 I think. Uh, uh, they both are doing their own unique things. So has 2016 yeah. election. We don't hear a lot of conversation yeah. about transportation. Is anyone talking about it? Any of the candidates? Uh, I think a couple candidates have mentioned it, especially talk, discussing uh, uh, policies surrounding ride sharing and things along those lines. But um, uh, 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 I think it's a very important policy that should be probably uh, one of the larger topics of discussion 
in the debates, uh, which have really not arisen to date so far. So what would you like to see being discussed and what do you think are the priorities or should be the priorities for politicians and policymakers when it comes to this enormous revolution? Uh, I think if you look at one of the fundamental things uh, that enables every single uh, transportation service today, uh, which we don't really think about anymore, is actually the roads. Uh, the roads that everything drives on. Uh, the roads? Think, we, we think about, you know, Bluetooth streaming your music or things along those lines in the Silicon Valley, but uh, the roads, the bridges, uh, the street signs, all that stuff is actually a fundamental thing. And that happens to come from our taxpayer dollars. And unfortunately, uh, this infrastructure currently, if you look at the uh, actual ratings, um, uh, it's kind of like a C or D grade rating because we haven't really upgraded any of this infrastructure that um, we rely on today since the 60s or something along those lines. And uh, 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 as we move forward, uh, we're having more Americans travel more miles uh, in more cars, uh, which is going to cause even more wear and tear to these roads. And uh, that's so we a need a serious, point. a serious upgrade, absolutely. which of course will cost a large amount of money. Yep, absolutely. And there, we need to find a way to pay for it because it's already currently in a massive deficit um, in terms of actually funding. So how are we going to pay for it? Uh, there's a lot of solutions out there already. Um, I think uh, Jerry Brown in California has proposed one. Um, Which uh, is what? Uh, uh, it's called the Road Use to Charge Program uh, to actually tax people based on the number of miles they travel. And Good idea, Sahas? Uh, it's hard to tell. Um, uh, uh, but it's the, a beginning. It's a beginning. It's, it's, there's, there's many states trying to address this issue or trying to come up with solutions for them. Uh, none of them have necessarily been implemented yet. Um, uh, and if they have been, they've been done in small pilots in specific regions or within states, not at a national level. Um, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, Unfortunately, anything that has to do with raising taxes to solve this infrastructure is a political uh, 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 death sentence. David so, Fritzstadt, yeah. who, a friend of mine who's the chairman of uh, Frost & Sullivan, one of the big consultancies, yeah. argues that to have a really effective networked car infrastructure requires trillions of dollars of government mm -hmm. investment. It requires essentially the, the relaying of roads. Is that fair or can this be done for less than trillions? Uh, it's definitely going to be very expensive. Um, I, I can't give you the exact number, but I think the... Many billions. But the, the way that you're redesigning roads moving forward is going to be very different. Um, the general uh, notion was that if more people need to travel more miles, you'll need more cars and more lanes and more parking lots to do it. But as we enter this new era of ride sharing and semi-autonomous vehicles and things along these lines, uh, you'll actually be able to achieve that with fewer cars with higher efficiency and less traffic um, because of simply better co co organization and coordination. So uh, 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 if you were to do it in the traditional way, it would be very expensive, but today's methodology of doing it, you can probably accomplish for a lot less. Could this be financed the traditional Silicon Valley way through venture capitalists, through private investment? I think uh, some of those efforts are already under place, uh, underway, and I can't really share much more about that. But Is um, this a smartcar.com initiative, potentially? Uh, potentially, yeah. It's something that I think uh, uh, software, cloud, and uh, startups definitely have a place. Are to any play of the in. candidates talking about it? Anyone? Hillary? Uh, I think uh, I think she's mentioned a couple things regarding uh, uh, creating better policies to ensure that uh, uh, drivers. You think she's vehicles, genuinely interested, or just saying it out of politeness? It's hard to tell, and I don't really don't want to uh, speak on behalf of any candidate since I don't know those policies strongly enough. Uh, to be able to. to uh, but we can't expect this to become a major issue in the election. Probably not, because. Currently, to be quite honest, uh, uh, any solution surrounding improving infrastructure requires raising taxes unless there's a smarter way to pay for it. And for any politician, that likely would be a death sentence of their campaign to want to raise taxes heavily. Even Donald Trump? Uh, <laughs> no idea. I don't want to mention him. <laughs> well, you didn't mention him. So in an ideal situation, Sahas, in conclusion, what needs to happen? realistically we're not going to have trillions of dollars of investment yeah. is this revolution going to be driven by the private sector it's very possible that we find ways to hack around the system to uh, enable these solutions to be built in a scalable easy way uh, startups that's kind of the beauty of startups uh, 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 rather than go unfortunately uh, I guess uh, um, bureaucracies don't like this um, regulators uh, regulators don't like it but uh, we find ways of getting things done, even if that regulation, uh, or we had to fight against it. We find hacks in the system or loopholes to get things done very quickly, efficiently, and make a massive impact on making the world a better place. So I think the private sector definitely has many unique solutions to solving this problem. Well, that's a great conclusion, making yeah. the world a better place for transportation. Uh, best of luck with yeah. your 
uh, smartcar.com, which I think we'll learn more about in the next few months. Absolutely. And thank you again for appearing on Innovate 2016. Thank you so much. Thank you.